Good morning. Boker Tov. Happy post Hanukkah. We are back into our Tanya learning. Everybody, please take out a coin, put it into Sadaka, Gedel Sadaka, Shemika Revis, Esaka Ula. And if you would like to put down anyone that needs to heal him for us today, we'll wait a few more seconds till people wake up on a lovely Tuesday morning when it's vacation here in Toronto. Okay, we'll wait a few minutes. Okay, so as you join, just put down your Tehillim if you want to say specifically any Tehillim for you, and I'll start saying it. Valeya Bas Basya, Vahenya Bas, Rachad Varleya, and anyone else who needs a Fush Lema. Lamatech, Ms. Morla David, Yancha, Dina, Biyom Tzara, Yisagef Hashem, Elohe Yaakov, Yishlach Ezra Hamikodesh, Metsia Yisadeka, Yiskar Kom Mechosecha, Velosra, Yidash Nesela. Hello, good morning, Francesca. Hope it's lovely in Italy. Good morning, Elaine. Hope it's nice. I hope the weather is turning out better for you in North Palm Beach. And good morning, Anat. Wonderful to see you, Boker Tov. It's wonderful. Okay, put down any names. Good morning, Sophie. Put down any names. No, thanks. Any names? Hello? Hi. Hey, Evelyn, you could have come over. Come on. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Kim from South Africa. And uh, wow, enjoy Cape Town. Lucky you. Okay, if there's anyone that names have to be um, diving for, today's class will be in their schus. And great to see you for those who are here live and for those who are joining us live on Facebook. So oh, my cover story today is about, it's about a question I have for you. Would you, and I'm going to ask this here as well, you could answer me. Would you, if you received accidentally an envelope or a package or you opened up a drawer, and you found $98,000, which you know is not yours. And you might even know who it belongs to. Would you give it back? It wasn't a family friend. It was just, you have an inkling that you know whose money it is. Would you give it back? What would be your instant go-to? Give it back? Give it back. Okay. Do you know most of the world would not? Most of the world with that. It's finders keepers, losers weepers. That's the, that's the non, that's the popular theory out there. I want to tell you a story. Hey, good morning, Naomi. Good morning, Helga. Good morning, Ingrid. It's so nice. Oh, Ingrid says, if it's a mistake, I would give it back. So I want to tell you a story about a couple that made CNN headlines a couple of years ago. I'm trying to think what's the date. And the reason why it, made, it was actually last year, the reason why it made waves is because clearly the rest of the world doesn't think the way we think. And the reason we think that way is because specifically we do have that nefesh kit. We do have that confirmation we made with Hashem that we spoke about last week. Mashpin also the heat side of the Russia. Our neshama is always pulsating with this promise we made to Hashem. So even if something seems tempting and the nefesh of the Bahamas, the animal soul says, nah, no one will know. They'll come, they'll answer, they'll come, to, they'll come in. Nobody will know. It doesn't matter. You can keep the money. You have to know that your neshama is directing you up the path of a nefesh of kiss. Good morning. Okay. So there was a Connecticut rabbi that him and his wife found online. Hey, good morning, you guys. You can make a coffee in the kitchen if you like, and you can come have a muffin. So this Connecticut rabbi and his wife, uh, 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 he's a, uh, 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 a malamid. Do you know what a malamid is? He's a teacher in a school. He's not a multimillionaire. Let me just make that very emphatic. He's a teacher in a school with a very basic salary. One day, him and his wife saw an ad to buy a shell, uh, like a, a white desk, one of the kids needed the desk. 
So he went and his wife and they went to pick it up about a half hour away from him. And the man's name, which I feel like we have to announce because he made Kedish's name, his name is Noah Murov. He was a teacher at a private Jewish high school somewhere in New Haven. And what happened was he saw the ad for this desk, you know, like they have always online. Where do you buy these things today online? Amazon, no, like a used. Wayfair. Oh. Used. Kijiji, right? eBay. Facebook. Exactly. Mac. Okay. So that's what he thought. He went with his wife. They picked up the desk. He puts it into the car and they get home. When they get home, alas, the desk doesn't fit through their front door. Now, the woman that they bought it from, a Gentile woman from New Haven, she said to them, you know, I built this desk myself and it's so sentimental, but I'm so happy it's going to a beautiful family. And so she sells it. Hi, Diane. Good morning, Joanne. I'm just going to say good morning to everyone here. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Helga. Hi, Arlene. So, Becky, hello. Good morning from Israel. Hi, Pamela. Okay. So she... She tells them she's so happy that, you know, like when you give something or you, you're, you're happy you finds a nice home, right? So this woman was happy she found a nice home. When they get to the front door and it doesn't fit in, this rabbi says, no problem, grabs a screwdriver and starts to take apart some of the pieces to make it through the door. As he t- takes apart one section, the drawers come out, he finds a baggie. And Dollar bills, $98,000. This man has a Malamed in a yeshiva. He's not making six figures. $98,000 for a from family with a lot of children come a long way. He says instinctively, him and his wife look at each other and they go, we're going to give it back. We must give it back. They call the lady because they had her phone number, right? Hi, Rosalie. Good morning, Carrie. Oh, from Vitby. You're Vitby. So famous a place. <laughs> we have Italy, Cape Town, and Vitby. It's amazing. It's, what's going on today on Facebook is amazing. So he calls the woman, and she is stunned. She can't say a word. She says, you found this? This is my inheritance. And I love I I put it in there like 20 years ago. Forgot about it. And she's, this lady says, I forgot where I put it. She says, no, I forgot where I put it. I would have never remembered I put it in the back of this dresser. I can't believe you guys are so honest. And she called CNN. This was in, she called CNN with the story and a thank you letter, mentioned this guy. His name was on CNN. A Kiddush Hashem. What does a Kiddush Hashem mean? Anybody, what's a Kiddush Hashem? Yeah, bringing honor to Hashem. It's one of the biggest mitzvahs we can do. You know what the antithesis of a Kiddush Hashem is? Achil Hashem. For that sin, you have got to do a lot, a lot of tshuva. When a Jew makes Achil Hashem, for example, when a Jew, and I won't mention names, of people that have um, unfortunately scammed millions and millions of dollars, and people go, oh, so-and-so is a Jew? That Achil Hashem? That person is a Jew? No, no. When people know that that Jew scammed millions of people for millions of dollars, that man is the cause of the Hashem. And the amount of Jew that he must do is uncomprehensible because the goal of a Jew is to make Hashem's name Kodesh, to make Hashem's name beautiful, to bring Hashem's awareness into the world in a beautiful way. Why? Because this world doesn't see God. The world doesn't know God, but when we bring Hashem's name into the world and we elevate it, that's called the Kiddush Hashem, and that is huge. This man, this man, Noah Murov, and I definitely want to say his name again and again because he made a Kiddush Hashem. And that is also, ask my children, hello, and you ask my children, you can make a coffee if you want in the kitchen, okay? When you, when you make a Kiddush Hashem, my children knew when they, when they would walk out the door with my husband to go to show, I would say, remember when you're walking down the street, make a Kiddush Hashem. Like from when they were babies. What? It's like wanting to make your parents on. Exactly. Exactly. Making a Kiddush Hashem. So it's the way we act in stores. It's what we deal with our business. It's the way we talk to our, the garbage man. It's everybody. 
because they know we're Jewish. And it's not, I don't need to be thanked by a garbage collector. I don't need to be thanked by the IRS or whoever it is in Canada. I need to, them to know this is how a Jew people act. So a kid, this is shows it. Now, the question of what I'm asking today is. But I have a question. Yeah. So is it just as bad to, to give? When you say that person gives Jewish people a bad name, that's a Hillel Hashem? Yeah. It's, yeah, because it's not really about the Jewish people, it's about Hashem. Why about Jewish people? When you say that game, why is it our, why is it that when we do something positive and beautiful and glorifying, why is that a Kiddush Hashem? Because we are what? We are Jewish people that have something that we're talking about now in Tanya, a Nefesh Elokis. A Nefesh Elokis reflects God. Another term for that is Tzalem Elohim, which Tzalem Elohim, the truth is that every human has a Tzalem Elohim. Every human has a godly image. But a Jew has an extra responsibility infused to us by having an Efesh Elokis. Hashem didn't give us 630 mitzvahs and say, well, I made you look at everyone else. Go do, wait, wait, wait. Everyone else has seven mitzvahs. You gave us 613. How are we supposed to deal with it? Ah. Uh... I gave you an official kiss. Imagine you telling someone, I want you to go and uh, help the people in Uganda. And that's your responsibility. It's your mandate. Wait, but you don't give me money and you don't give me an airplane. You don't give me, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to give you an unlimited bank account. I'm going to give you a, a plane at your service so you can go help the people with their water supply, etc. in Uganda. Oh, if you're giving me the tools, then I could do it. Is Hashem giving us tools? Of course. He's not giving us a Torah with 613 mitzvahs and says, plump, I'm plumping you down the world like everybody else. They have seven. You got to do another 606 extra. No. Hashem is giving us a nefesh kiss, which is what we're talking about now on Tanya. That makes all the difference. When you have an official kiss. You are empowered. A, because we spoke about the first words in Tanya, which I want to reiterate today, because when you know this line by heart, you will never feel that you are not capable of doing your mission. And the words are in Tanya like this. It's, it's not written by the Alter Rebbe. It was, it's, it's part of Talmud. But the Alter Rebbe starts the entire Tanya with these words. And does anybody know what these words are? Nancy or Lisa or Sandy or Carrie or Rosalie. Carrie, remember these words? Mashbim Oto. Because afterwards, Tihi Sadik, Baal Tihi, Russia. In English, what does it mean? We, the Talmud says like this in Tractate Nita 30b, it says that before a child is born, his or her or her soul is made to swear an oath. What's the oath? Be a righteous person and do not be wicked. That oath we spoke about last week, that oath, you know, it, it enlivens the neshama because I made a promise. And we spoke about this last week. Remember, Rivka, we said, you promise your child, yes, after, you know, after when we have winter holidays, we're going to go tobogganing. And it's minus 10 degrees, and you don't want to go to bargaining. But you made a promise to your kids. <laughs> made a promise. Even if you said, Blinegar, but you said to your children, this saying, right before the, the Malach taps us, this saying is what gives us the power to consciously and deliberately every day live our life with this mandate. And every day we are constantly being pulled two ways. I just dive in this morning. I could tell you when I dive in the Mida, everything that I have to do for the next week falls into my head. <laughs> Doesn't fall into my head while having a coffee. When I'm sitting there on a coffee with my day timer, I'm blank. What do I have to do today? Can't remember. But as soon as I dive in the Mida, boom, 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 boom. Before I know it, I'm halfway through. And I wanted to focus on this paragraph. And I wanted to focus on this paragraph. And I wanted to really dive in by this paragraph. Right, because each paragraph, which we could learn at another time of that Mida, is unbelievable journey. It's an unbelievable journey of the neshama every day that allows you to access so much blessing. 
and the part of Rafa'inu, we ask Hashem to heal. If you know anybody that needs to be healed in your family or in your community, you say it then. If Shema Kuleinu, when you cry out to Hashem, if there's anyone that you know needs help in anything, whether it's Parnaso, whether it's Shalom Bayit, you think about them. And here I am, sweeping through Amida with a million other things. But luckily, I am in tune with my nephew Shalakis, and I get, like, I come back to, to, to Earth. Goldie, back to Earth, right? And and I, I believe that what you thought about was something to do with God, like helping people. Bill, Rifka, I love yeah. it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> right. There was none of that going to a massage on Wednesday because someone gave me a coupon. But that's also a good thing because you're restoring yourself so you could be a better wife. <laughs> the truth is, the truth is like this. Everything we do, if it has the right kavana, it could be godly. Obviously not eating tray for not going into something that's inappropriate or not saying negative things, but almost every action we do could really be aligned. Remember last week we made a brach on water and I said, I just elevated the water. That's it. You know, you think eating a muffin is not a mitzvah. It's a mitzvah. It's a kosher muffin that you are making a bracha on, which I think everyone should eat. Now it's a banana chocolate chip muffin. <laughs> By the way, for those of you who want muffins, 242 we made. So that's, that's why we make this promise. So t- last week we spoke a lot about that everyone had to tell him a look him. Today I want to get more into the Tanya and talk about a very interesting neshama, another nefesh, another soul, that's not really spoken about too much, but really the Tanya is talking to that nefesh. We have a nefesh of a kiss, which is the godly soul. We have the nefesh of a hamid, which is the animal soul. What's in between? Which, which, which soul is in between? So that's called the nefesh hasichlet. And that, the Tanya doesn't actually talk, really address it, but there is another nefesh, the nefesh hasichlet. And this is the one that actually hears the voices of both and helps us make the right choice. Sechel. Oh. So this Tanya is really talking to us as that nefesh hasichlet that's constantly going to be determining who's going to run the rooster today. Who's going to run the roost today? Is it going to be the nefesh Is it the nefesh? nefesh oh, the nefesh hasichlet is going to be um, deciphering or, and it happens in split seconds, by the way, right? You have a, an impact or an input from something, another input for something, and the nefesh hasichlis. So really the Tanya is addressing the nefesh hasichlis, which is going to be, which is us, which is going to make our choices throughout our day. Okay? So it's empowering that nefesh hasichlis. And we call that sometimes shuttle diplomacy, right? When it's got to get both sides, hear both viewpoints, and then makes the choice. Right? That's, so the nefesh hasichlis is that Shuttle this diplomacy going on all day. And, and that's why maybe Jews are good lawyers, because we're, we're constantly doing that. We're constantly the mediator. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. Okay. So one of the things that Altreva addresses, which I find very interesting, and I think it, it helps me, and maybe it's going to help you as well. He alludes in here at, 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 some, at some point here in, in the parak. He says, sometimes we could be discouraged. Like last week's conversation about being a Bainini. That we wish we were a Bainini, right? That most of the times we're just a Russia Vitovlo. You weren't here last week, right? So we spoke about the Russia Vitovlo. See, I remember. The Russia Vitovlo, I mean, he's like us. He does good and then he slips and he does good and he slips. That's who we are. And then we said we're going to have, like Nikki, what did we say? We have Bainini moments, right? You okay, Nikki? Right, okay. The Bainini moments, and yet last week Nikki said to me, I had a Bainini moment, there was like such a, I loved when you referenced that, I actually said to my husband, you know, like Nikki referred to it as a Bainini moment, I think that that's so empowering that we know that we can have those moments, it's not like everything or nothing in Judaism, that's what I love about being a Jew, it's not everything or nothing, we're not like, you know, there's the priest there, and then there's the, the folk there, and then every day, every month you got to go and pour out your heart and tell him how bad you were, and he does some stuff with his hands, and you go out and you start again. And we don't have that. We between us and Hashem, and we have our any moments throughout the day, and hope we hope at the end of the day that we you know we go oh I had a lot of more any moments than I had yesterday, like right. But 
that struggle could sometimes bring us down. So I'm going to throw out this question to you and to all my friends I watch in life. Give me a figure in Jewish history that had a inner quarrel, but it was a physical quarrel. She was confused. She was totally at wit's end to what was going on with her inner quarrel. And I'll give you a hint. She was pregnant. This woman was pregnant, and there was something about her pregnancy that was worrying her to no end. Oh, yes, yes, Rivka. Rivka, Rivka was pregnant with twins. And Rashi, what? Well, let me tell you what happened with Rivka. Rivka was pregnant with twins. Every time she walked by a street that had a dollar tree, that's, that's right, very good. I have all the answers coming up here. Every time she had walked by a dollar tree, worshipped the idol worship, you know, there was a lot of that in those days. Most people were worshipping idols. There wasn't an awareness of God. Remember, Avram was the first person that recognized God. So Avram was the first Jew, then his, bro his son Yitzchak. So there weren't a lot of Jews around yet, right? Walks by. Is kicking. You know when you're pregnant, um, there's certain music, and mother will go, whenever there's certain music, my baby kicks. Or they walk into, like people will, will tell you when they're pregnant that there's certain things that bring the kicking in the baby. Certain music, certain sounds. So whenever she walked by idolatry, there was kicking. Whenever she walked by, there was a school there called Shame the Aver, which had two great Sadiqim who had a, a righteous school in those days. Whenever so she walked by that building, she felt kicking. So she went into that yeshiva called Shane the Aver, and she says, what's going on? What kind of child do I have? He kicks when I pass an idolatry. He kicks when I go to a, a, a Torah, like a yeshiva, like a, a learning, a godly place. What kind of child do I have? And Rashi says, Shane the Aver answered her, don't worry, you're pregnant. You're pregnant with twins. And she walked out, skipping and dancing. Why is that comforting? So Rashi explains, because she knew now she didn't have a schizophrenic child, she had one child that was leaning towards adultery, one child that was leaning towards godly stuff. Well, that would still make me cry. But in her heart, she said, that's okay, because I can transform that child. At least I know I'm not going to be having a child that's totally confused. I have two children and it's my job to take that child and move him into the godly side. We are pregnant with twins. You, you and I are pregnant with twins. It shouldn't make us sad. It should make us aware of what we have. That awareness, because remember, that's what I told you. What is Tanya? Tanya is an awareness of our spiritual anatomy so that we don't get depressed, we don't get sad, we don't get we don't feel like a loser. We don't feel like we are at the bottom of the pit. We know we're pregnant with twins. So do I sometimes have negative thoughts? I do. Can I go overcome it? Of course. Do I sometimes say something that, that's negative? Is that me? No. No, no, no. I have an extra sure case. Did I fall to, for the Nefesh of Amis? Yeah. I'm human. Can I get back up? Yes. Right now. That, by the way, if I just knew that, I could close the Tanya. I feel better already. Right? Because I feel like I know who I am, I know what uh, what my struggles are, and I know why God gave me the struggle. Why? <laughs> why didn't God create me just with an official kiss? And and the whole purpose of, of the whole purpose of this world, the what the, Rebbe, the Alter Rebbe talks about in <laughs> Is to make a dear of a zekal out of a sachas priyasa leis the dear of zu betach tonim. The whole purpose that God created the world. Listen, God, there was a, there was a Garden of Eden. Adam and Eve lived there. It could have been perfect, no pain, no evil, nothing. Hashem didn't want that world, and, and that's why Chava took from the fruit from the eitz hadaat from the tree of knowledge. She knew that really God did not want that world. God wanted a world out of God the garden. He wants a world here where, like you said, Talia, we have to struggle to do good and we are victorious. 
In Hebrew, that's called, which is a very, another very important term to know and to use, Bechira Chafshit, free choice. If we only had an official kiss, would you have free choice? Of course not. You'd wake up in the morning, automatically, your thoughts would be positive, you'd wash Negabasar in the right sink, you <laughs> you'd make brachas a whole day, you wouldn't forget anything, you would never eat anything that's, you would never think anything that's wrong, you would never, because you were only a godly person, like an angel. But God didn't want angels. God wanted humanity with free choice. And we pray for the Moshiach, and then, and then we're over free choice. And you know what? We're told by our tzaddikim, grab every second that you can. Because once Mashiach comes, there is no more free choice. You cannot get rewards for any good thing that you did. So on one hand, we, we wait for Mashiach because, you know what, the world could use Mashiach now. We know that we have a lot of choice. A lot of people aren't making the right choices. So we're, we're looking forward to a time of Mashiach. And we've earned it. It's like we've had already 5,000 783 years of choices. It's a long time. Now it's my retirement. I want to sit in Miami Beach. <laughs> in other words, now, but you know, we say that one moment in this world is greater than anything in the world to come. So you can hop around and do mitzvahs because once a person is either in the days of Mashiach and Olam Abba, they cannot do any mitzvah anymore. So now is the time that we have that struggle and we know we're pregnant and we know we have the nefeshul kiss and nefeshul Bahamas every morning. And that is why the first thing we do in the morning is we say Mother Ani, we remind ourselves, we click into our mandate. We don't click into our mandate at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. We click into our mandate at the second we open our eyes, even before we wash our hands. Our hands are still tummy. We didn't wash our hands yet. But right away, Hashem says, just say your mantra. I'm a Jew. I have two souls. I'm going to work with it today. I'm going to be the Bainani. And if I fall back, that's okay. I really, you know, today everyone's talking about the wish. Is it called the wish board? The vision board. You ever heard about the vision board? It's a big thing about this vision board. My husband mentioned on Shabbos, there was this fellow that, Coaches today are talking a lot about your vision. You project what you want to the world, and the world gives you back. We call it Hashem. The world calls it the world. Um, manifestation, the secret, all that, right? That's like maybe coming from Klippa, but from the outside. But in, in, in Judaism, we actually say, Trach good fit sign good. Whatever you think comes into your life, right? So what's that? Ah, right. So, what what's the what's the point of, of 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 thinking good? So today, the world is using different lingo, but it's really the same thing. They're making something called a vision board. You cut out, you know, sayings, slogans, pictures, ideas, hopes, goals. You put it on a board, and you say, "This is really this is my direction. I'm going to get that." This is what a lot of life coaches are doing. They and sit down. They want, and they charge, right? And they sit down. We could do it as a game one day. You put down sayings, slogans, images, pictures. You know, let's say I, I, I want to buy a house in Israel. So you cut out a picture of a house. You put it down. You put a picture of the hotel. You write things like talk of it got, got with sign good. Um, all's well that wins L. Hashem is in charge. You put down all these beautiful slogans, ideas. A kobe de shemayim. Everything's in Hashem's hands. This two shall pass. Yes, beautiful things, right? You put it down on this vision board. You put down pictures of sadaka boxes overflowing with money. You put down Shabbos tables filled with guests. You put down beautiful roasts that you're going to serve on Shabbos. Big challahs, beautiful challah boards. You put down beautiful menorahs, like all these gorgeous things. So they do this, not with menorahs. They do this with other stuff. So there's a fellow that did this. He had put down his, his dream home. And he had put, and he had done this years ago, and he put it away in his basement. They eventually moved. The man made a lot of money. They moved into a new home in Chicago. When he was unpacking the box, the exact home that was on his vision board was the home that he was living in right now in Chicago, the same address. 
So the truth is that what we give, what we, what we, how we format our, our day when we say Moda Ani is that's the way the day is going to go. And yes, the Nefesh of is going to push us down. And he's going to clop us down. And he's going to say, stop being so righteous, Nikki. Who do you think you are, Talia? You're just a regular nobody with a big Nefesh of Bahamas. Yeah, Goldie, you're talking so positive. You know what goes on in your mind. Yes, I do. I do. Because I have a Nefesh of Bahamas and I know that. I know that I'm pregnant with twins. But I also know that my Nefesh of kiss can keep being empowered, empowered, empowered as I keep boxing with my right hand and I strengthen my godly soul. That's the voice that is dominant. I think it's extra hard for people who are uh, all or nothing. Yes. Because Judaism is never all or nothing. There's no such a thing. I really struggle. Like once you, it's kind of like when, you, when you're eating really healthy and then you go somewhere and you have like one piece of cake. There you go. Oh, I'm ready. I had the cake. The day's over. The day's over. I might as well eat the rest of the cake. It's hard. By the way, Tal, it's very interesting. Understanding Tanya helps you in a lot of areas. Dieting as well. Spending. People who are like, spend money all the time. Oh, I already, we already spent so much money. I'm just going to spend more. But when you study Tanya, you realize that you're not just the everything or nothing person. It really gives you power. Or to like close your mouth after you had one piece. When you eat, you have to stop eating like a bema. Like in Hebrew, you say, to call it more bema, like when you eat fast. Mm. So I think that's the nefesh behema of yours. Like you, when you eat, you should have like portions of a, like when you eat the greens, that's when you become a bit of me because you're not usually eating the greens, but say trying to mm-hmm. eat yourself mm-hmm. with good things. Okay, but even even eating an animal, is that okay? if it's kosher and you made a bracha and you're using it because, I mean, I don't know about you, but, but the vegans I know, a lot of them look, look very like unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Hashem said to us, I said to Noah, after the Bible, you're allowed to eat meat because meat does give us strength. You don't have to sit down with a, you know, eight inch and sit down and you sit, you know, I remember my kids actually talking on Shabbos, all my grandchildren were here for Shabbat. Had Chayla's kids and Basi's kids, Can I, there were 13 grandchildren in this house, a whole Shabbos. I know the house looks very clean now, but it was a busy house. And the kids were talking about Florida, and my daughters were reminiscing when we took them to Disney World, and they were saying to their mothers, Bobby and Zadie were so good, they took you, and, and we slept, we drove. You know, we couldn't afford to fly the six kids, but we drove them, and we took them, and but there's a story that stood out that my daughters reminded us of. We were sitting. Um, have haven't you been to Disney World? So you know that they, they have the Disney parade. Everyone sits on the sidewalks, right? And then they have the parade. So my kids and I and my husband we sat down. And we were watching the parade. And as we, oh sorry, and before the parade started, there were stores that were selling you know food, food. You know, there's popcorn and all, all kinds of stuff. There was one store right where we were sitting that was selling turkey legs. Turkey legs are big. And they were holding it not on a plate with a napkin and a fork. They're holding it in a napkin. And there are people walking up like this. And my kids were horrified. I said, Mommy, look at that. Look, it looks like they're behemoths. It looks like they're animals. It was so off-putting to my children that they, 30 years later, they can never forget that image. When you eat, you have to eat with your beneficial of kiss. You're eating like a Jew. We sit, you know, Jewish people, we don't, we don't eat running around. Children have to sit by table because you have to bench in the same place where you ate. So you have to sit like a mensch. And so there's a way, just because the Mitzvah Sashem gave us, he already taught us etiquette. There is no better etiquette lady that can teach me etiquette than, than Shulchan Aruch. Because Shulchan Aruch tells me how to eat. You eat with the kavana that this beautiful, delicious food is yours to give you energy so you can have the strength to do mitzvahs. You buy the nicest food for Shabbos because you have guests, because you want to give your children the feeling that I love Shabbos. During the week, we have average suppers. But on Shabbos, it's not macaroni and cheese. On Shabbos, it's a three-course meal. Right, so this is all feeding our nefesh kiss and allowing our nefesh kiss to be aware that 
everything we do can be elevated. And of course, there are some things that we can't. There are some things that we can never elevate, like not kosher food. No matter how many shochtim slaughter that piggy, he, he can never be kosher. And no matter how many times you make a bracha on that, you know the story of this guy in the restaurant, and the rabbi was walking by the restaurant. It was in Rome, walks by. And he sees his congregate is sitting in the restaurant. He's shocked because this congregate comes to show off in and, you know, he comes across like he's, you know, observant and he's watching. It's a real trafe restaurant. He watches from the side and he sees, he's like, hey, maybe, maybe he'll just order a salad. Okay, salad. No, out comes this huge chazer with a big fruit in the mouth and he puts it in front of this man. The rabbi can't hold it anymore. He runs and he goes, Josh, like, how could you do this, Josh? He goes, I ordered an apple and look how they brought it to me. So he says, I know, but, but you know this is a not kosher place. He goes, you saw the whole thing? You watched me come in here? You watched me order it? You watched me, like, start to eat it? He goes, oh, good. So now it has rabbinical supervision? <laughs> You can't have rabbinical supervision on trafe. Trafe is trafe. But, so those things can never be elevated. But in the, the most of the world that is godly, that, that could, could be godly, with the right makshava, we can make it something that, we, that gets elevated. So we have to realize, who am I? Am I Nefesh of Bahamas or Nefesh of Kis? I am both. I am pregnant with both. My Nefesh Bahamas is all about physical pleasure, self-preservation, self-love, self-help. You know, today the books in the Indigo are full of self-help sections. It's all about self-help. Self-help is good as long as it can be used for godly stuff. As long as you're becoming a better person, you could be a better mother. So you could have the right words to say to your children. Instead, of, you're a bad boy. You think your child, what you did was is so good. And I know that you are, it's a, a, you have a nefesh kiss. And these are words, by the way, we have to teach our children. It's lingo. We have to teach our children so that when we want to correct them, we want to, I don't want to say reprimand, but, you know, we have to always help our children, so we do give reprimanding. But we use the right words instead of bad boy. I can't believe you're always spilling the milk. You're always, you know, what's with you? Um, there's this comedian that uh, his wife is Jewish, and he talks a lot about how, you know, his father, when his father used to yell at him, he used to say, you know, and he used to curse the kid, you know. And my wife, she's always like, oh, you spilled the milk? That's okay, there's more milk where that came from. You know, <laughs> the, you know positive parenting. <laughs> so finding the positive and if it's milk it's like you know we don't want to crush the child because they feel milk yeah, yeah we, we, we've all spilled milk hello as adults we don't spill milk okay but we're all human but the nefesh of bahamas really is just about self 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 the nefesh of kiss is all about being godly being altruistic being given so when you see which part of you is at work you know which is the neshama that's at play. You know, I just got my paycheck. I'm giving 10%. That's a lot of money because I really could use it for something, but I'm giving it. Wow, that is godly. You know, compliment yourself. Build it up. Build it up because the more you build up a muscle, the more you align yourself with that thing. I will just wrap it up with a little bit of a, of a, of a takeaway for today. So what is the Al, Al, Al Rebbe telling us? He is giving us the information about the first soul, the Nefesh Elokis, the second soul, the Nefesh Rahamis, and what's the third soul again I told you about? Nefesh HaSichlet, exactly. The intellectual soul. And he says, these are what you're dealing with, and just understand what you have. And now he says, I'm going to give you the techniques to deal with it. This is who you are. I'm going to give you the techniques. So we have to realize that we are not just born with a, you know, random and thrown into the world and go deal with this mess. Shem, Shem gave the secrets and the Alter Rebbe about 300 years ago uncovered the secrets for us because he saw that 
The Jews were falling apart. We were assimilating. And, and, and why were we assimilating? We were assimilating because we thought we were bad, because we're not godly. We're, I'm not part of the tzaddikim. So I guess, well, if I'm not a tzaddik, like you said, if I already had one cake, I might as well. If I already did one sin, I might as well do another sin. No, we did one sin. Get up, brush ourselves off. Let's do tshuva and get on. And I think that is empowering. And that's why the Alter Rebbe's work was, you know, first it was almost decimated when Alter Rebbe was thrown into jail. And then with enough of prayers and enough of uh, the, the Jewish people coming together, Alter Rebbe was freed from jail and, you know, gave us the Tanya, which unloaded and unpacked Kabbalah, which is already given from the days of that Chaim Vital, thousands of years ago, but it wasn't made easy. Like, I have a whole set of Zohar on my thing. It's still in its plastic wrapping. I don't get it. It's not made for me and you. But the Tanya is made for me and you. Specifically, it's translating languages for every one of us. So, wishing you an amazing day. The knowledge. Nefesh kiss, Nefesh Bahamas, Nefesh Sichlis. And you have the tools to go on today. I know, I know it takes a long time to learn more and more, but eventually we'll have all the tools in every situation. So wishing you a great day. Thanks for joining.